Now, welcome to another news from Naboo with Thor's lightning mm. takes. Let us get right to the news. The first bit of news today, and we've got a full roster up for you. Samuel L. Jackson wants to return as Mace Windu. He has to Bryce Dower, Dallas Howard to put him into the Mandalorian. It seems that the Mace Windu return fan theory for everything Star Wars, well, Sam, Samuel L. Jackson's totally behind this. Like, he want, He's very interested in reprising the old role and bringing his character back. He even commented he'd learned uh, the two lightsaber with his other hand, and <laughs> most people with one hand seem to return in Star Wars, is his theory, so... I guess Most and, characters seem to return in Star Wars, period. <laughs> I mean, it's great that he loves the role so much and he wants to play Master Windu again, but personally, I need some Star Wars characters to remain dead and not have the memes of somehow Mace Windu has returned crop up everywhere. I mean, sometimes characters die, and if you keep bringing them back, you reduce the consequences of character actions. And, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? Well, first of all, do I think Mace Windu could have survived? I mean... Just throwing out the idea of Samuel L. Jackson coming back to reprise his role. Throwing all that out. Do I think Mace Windu could have survived that encounter with Palpatine getting his hand cut off and then being electrocuted out a window? Yeah, I think he could have survived. We've seen plenty of Jedi fall. We've seen Luke get electrocuted pretty good, too. We've seen, So it's, you know, the combination of things probably, yes, killed him. And I'm sure Lucas intended for that to be his death. I don't think Lucas was trying to leave it vague. They just didn't want to show Windu getting... You know, having his hand cut off, electrocuted, shot out a window, falling a couple thousand feet, and then splatting into the concrete. They, they leave <laughs> off that last part because we don't need to literally see it, that. We cut Darth Maul in half on screen and he came back. Yeah, and which is kind of my point. Let's stop having these thought to be very gruesome, very permanent. <laughs> Not that death is never permanent, but these very permanent kind of deaths. And then you come back from them because, like you said, it... For one, it cheapens a good character death. And for two, you're like, well, we didn't literally see him die. So maybe, you know, we didn't see him like buried or put into the ground or whatever it is. Hey, so maybe he's still alive. New theory. Uncle and Aunt Peru, not dead. <sighs> I didn't see gonna, them die. The, they were prop skeletons. We don't know. Maybe. I mean, Who we knows? Maybe Owen and Baru were ready for, for them to come for Luke. I mean, the Inquisitors were snooping around, so he may have had this plan where he would pretend him and Baru were burned, and so was Luke. Maybe he, Luke Kenobi just didn't see the third it. corpse. Maybe Kenobi, there were three Kenobi of them. Was in on it. Maybe. I mean, why not at this point? Or they just <laughs> survived. They weren't that badly burnt after all. It, <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I, I mean, do I love Samuel L. Jackson? Is he one of the greatest actors of our time? Sure. Would I love to see him in Star Wars again? Sure. Does it make sense for him to be in The Mandalorian? Not so much. Not so much. I mean, with the de-aging thing, we could always see him in flashbacks in Kenobi or something like that. Well, oh, Kenobi well, is obviously filmed. Let him just do some voiceovers or... for Tales of the Jedi. Anything, yeah. I, I would love it to see him fine. coming back to do, you know, old Mace, old original Mace Windu. He would be old if they brought him back in the current mm -hmm. timeline. But, no, I'd love to see Samuel L. Jackson do more Mace Windu. You know, mm -hmm. just here and there that... We don't need him in The Mandalorian. We don't need every character yeah, to come back. I agree. All right, let's move on to our next story today. Uh, a location that we have heard of but have never seen is going to be shown in Kenobi for the first time ever. Hooray! So in 1977, we get the line, Look, I can take you as far as Anchorhead. You can get transferred to Mos Eisley wherever you're going. So yes, after 45 years, we're finally going to see Anchorhead. We're going to make it to Anchorhead at last. Well, we do see it in the deleted scenes from A New Hope, right? With Biggs deleted and Deleted scenes friends, are deleted. They, they don't count. <laughs> they call Luke Wormy. No, which deleted. Which I'm glad. I'm so deleted glad that means they, they don't exist. Well, I don't know. They they exist. I've seen no, them. No, they're deleted. They called Luke Wormy and they make fun of him. And I'm, I'm so call you glad. I'm going So glad that that is not in the film because it's just, you know, that is not the way to introduce our hero. <laughs> um, in the Kenobi trailer, we do see the city from a distance. Tashi Station is actually on the outskirts of Anchorhead and... Well, we did see Tashi Station in the Book of Boba Fett, but now we're going to see into the heart of Anchorhead, its main transportation hub. From the distance, it looks like a huge like air traffic control tower, and it kind of reminds me of seeing like the Chicago International Airport or something. So people probably travel off-world from there. Maybe uh, that's what Boba Fett told us when he wanted to, we can just make it to Anchorhead. <laughs> very good, very good Boba Fett there. <laughs> I mean, so, this is this is one of those stories Kenobi like, okay. probably transforms off planet, maybe on planet there, you know. It's one of those stories where it's like, okay, that's interesting and cool, but, you know, it's, sure, let's see Anchorhead, why not? Why not? 
I don't know that I'm extra excited or not excited to see it. It's it's one of those things where it's like, okay. I don't know. After the Book of Boba Fett, I feel like we really need to hash out Tatooine We need to see the rest more. of Tatooine. Yeah, we need to see every city. <laughs> we need to, every inch of that planet covered. I agree. Let us <laughs> let us fully explore Tatooine. More Tatooine, please. Yes. Let's, let's see its entire history. I want to go back to when it was a water world. I want it everything. And everything. I'm, of course, being sarcastic. I'm... I understand Kenobi is going to be on Tatooine quite a bit, but I think we're good with Tatooine for a while after that. Exactly. Okay, next news story today. Star Wars Eclipse, not delayed? So, uh, Quantic Dreams has now gone on the record to debunk the rumors that uh, Star Wars Eclipse was delayed. The representative uh, (laughs) simply said, it hasn't been delayed because we never promised a launch window for the title. That is the best answer I've ever heard, but yeah. <laughs> I was to, a, a wizard arrives precisely when he means to, right? It's the old Gandalf saying. If you don't saying, tell him when it's coming, you can't game, really be late, It's can not you? delayed. It's not going to be early. That game will come out precisely when we've always intended it to come out. <laughs> years and years and years from now. They've also mentioned that uh, recruiting remains active as it works on Star Wars Eclipse. Because, remember... Uh, they talked about the old job postings and how they can't get people hired. Yeah, we talked about that in mm-hmm. the video, yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's another one of those things where it's, you know, there are people who obviously don't like Quantic Dream. We, we talked about that in the video. They've had some issue, yeah. issues with, you know, sexual harassment and, and so on. Toxic which, work environment. Yeah, so there are people who, you know, which, if again, if those are true, that's horrible. And I'm not defending that. But, I mean, certainly there are people who want to see this project fail simply because of that. There are also people who don't like the High Republic era, which the game is set in. So a lot of the reporting, I feel, is probably based on what you want of this game. Do you want it to see it succeed? Do you not? So I don't know what's true. I it's do. always so hard to know what's true nowadays because everybody mm-hmm. is telling their, their truth from a certain point of view. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. The trailer looked good. I know it's just a CGI trailer. It's not gameplay. I, I don't hate the High Republic era. I've enjoyed some of it, most of it, to be honest with you. So It's an intriguing looking trailer. Yeah, the trailer the looked good. Cool. I don't know what the truth is with Quantic Dream. I'm not here to pass judgment either way as someone who knows very little about it in the first place and clearly was not there to mm-hmm. see it, which again, if it happens, it's horrible. But I don't know. It's one of those things... Well, and Quantic Dreams did also have a recent announcement that their workforce increased by 50% in 2021. I mean, so, well, what does that mean if you had, It like, went from two to four. I was just going to say, if you <laughs> if you got, like, four people and you added two, you, you have a 50% increase, so I, I don't... You don't have to add one, I guess. I'm, I'm giving them a 200% increase. Yeah, you were, you were, they had I'm a huge increase. Really I'm being really generous. You're being a 100% increase. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, I mean, I don't know. I, I until, until they say the game is canceled or we get some definitive proof that the game is not coming out or... We see more of it. Well, we're not going to know. It's it's in limbo, in my opinion. So right, but if anything, this might have lit a little bit of a fire under them. Go, oh, gosh, so. we have to deliver because now nobody thinks we can. I I'm think hoping so. it's I think motivation. You're right about that. I think they probably saw that and like, well, no, it's it's really happening. You know, so hopefully, you know, if you want to see this game, and I want to see this game, why not? And mm-hmm. hopefully, they got a, a fire lit under their uh, their butt, and we'll get this game in the next couple of years. Absolutely. All right. Next news story, because we're still chugging along today. Star Wars Celebration tickets went on sale on the 15th. They're still available 48 hours later. It surprises me a little bit. I mean, they said limited quantities, and because these are just pretty much tickets that were refunded back when they originally canceled. So you can still get tickets, adult tickets, for Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Saturday is sold out. They're $75 for an adult. Steep price ticket, but pretty standard for this kind of event. I'm, I'm just honestly surprised they're still available. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised they're still available. I don't know if this is still kind of a, a COVID fear where people don't want to get together for big events, or if, which doesn't seem to make sense. Mm-hmm. We have sporting events and all kinds of huge events going on these days. Or if this is just, you know, some kind of fluke that people don't know when they're available. Could be time frame. Not, could be time frame. It could be, you know, it's only a couple months away. It's a vacation for a lot of people to go to yeah, Anaheim. and Expensive trip. You know, it could be less interest in Star Wars in general, which I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think People going, are they announcing anything? Yeah, I mean, well, that too. Like, what are, what are they actually... I don't know that we've had any sort of announcements of what to expect there. Any, like, the special guests? Plan, or maybe. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, do we know who's going to be there? Do we know no anything about it? So... <laughs> 
I don't know, this could be a combination of a lot of different things. I don't think it's like, you know, I suggested it, but I don't think it's a lack of interest in Star Wars. I think they have like 60 movie projects to announce. I, I mean, think, well, yeah, well, I think for better or worse, I think, you know, the, you do have the hardcore fans that are kind of split and some are leaving the franchise, but I think the, the masses, the, uh, the casual fans, the normies, whatever you want to call them, normies. I think they're still, they're all in on Star Wars still, so I don't think that's what it is. I mean, if we lived in California, I'd be like, hey, there's tickets up. We'd be like, yeah, let's go. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're down the road, like, that's what we did when it was in Chicago a couple of years ago. We didn't have to get a hotel. It wasn't a vacation. It was a, you know, a couple-hour drive there and back, so. Let's move on to our last little story for today, and it's just a minor story. I like to put a little extra sauce on the end, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Disney Plus has officially added those Marvel Netflix, but they added something else. Uh, if you're ever on Disney Plus and you're looking for something short and sweet to watch, the Marvel one shots are all up there. I know Hail to the King was up there. We watched it before we went to watch uh, Shang Chi, but they also have all of the other ones up there. The little, all the little one shots that they put in the feature films, all the little extra bonuses, all up there. They're usually pretty funny, worth the watch. They're like five to eight minutes. Yeah, little short ones. Yeah, they're really they fun. Do the, a, they don't really do those anymore. They I add a little miss extra, slight, little extra context to some of the movies. It's nice. Yeah, they usually come out when the when the home release on the on the Blu-ray or DVD, whatever you got. They would have that little extra one shot. They called them where. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so kind of the, the Thor ones are especially funny. Yeah, kind of sad they don't do that anymore. That was kind of fun, but. Mm-hmm. So cool that they are up there for anybody who has never seen them before. Yeah, because I think, I, I think the last out. one was with Thor Ragnarok. I think so. Maybe. Yeah. No, it was. That's uh, Team Daryl. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, that's right. I don't even know if that was on the disc or what that was. That exactly. might have just been online because I don't think yeah. the Team Thor ones were on the disc. No, I think those were something kind of different, yeah. But yeah, they're, they're up there. Give them a watch. They're fun. They're entertaining. Indeed. All right. Well, I guess that's all we've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below. Tell us what you think about the possible return of Mace Windu. Are you all for it, or do you think sometimes dead is better? And la- <laughs> better, but well, dead is that, dead. Hey, that. Well, yeah, dead is dead too. But let us know what you think about the Star Wars celebration tickets. Are you going? Are you interested in going? Are you not interested in going? Not surprised that they're not selling. And what about? Star Wars Eclipse. Are you excited for this game? Are you hoping it fails? <laughs> In the and, tor- tourism of Tatooine. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you want to see uh, Tatooine further fleshed out because it has been neglected so much in recent Star Wars content? <laughs> Couldn't just leave out of Mos Eisley. Nope. But anyway, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.